What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So today is day three in our learning to model in SketchUp series. So in today's video, we're going to talk about modeling something that lets us use arrays, which is basically copies of objects. You're going to use this a lot um, whenever you do anything that repeats. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Okay, so quick update on my quest to pass SketchUp before base camp of this year. So I've got 58 days left. Growth right now is nowhere near where it's going to need to be. But I've got some cool stuff coming up in the next couple weeks, so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure that you do that. A, to help me beat SketchUp, but B, because there's going to be some really cutting edge stuff that we're going to be talking about. So now let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this week we've got the ground right here, and then we've got a house that I've added from the 3D warehouse from Paul Wall. Uh, this is one of his many house models, but we want to add a picket fence to this front yard. And so we're gonna to try to do this in a very simple way. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start just by picking a corner and starting from there. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and just start from this corner right here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna start by tapping the R key and drawing a rectangle. So in this case, we're gonna say that this is three and a half by three and a half. So we're gonna type in 3.5 comma 3.5. So that's gonna give me my corner post right here. And we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna push pull this up and for now, we're gonna give our corner post a height of, we'll call it four feet right here. And so remember that when we're working with things that repeat, we wanna make sure that we're doing this using components. Components are really important because they give us control over making changes to objects that repeat. So for now, I'm just gonna take this and select it. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click the make component button. And we're just gonna call this fence post. And we could call it fence post four by four if we wanted to. We're gonna click on okay. And so we'll talk more about that in a minute. Just know that making that component is going to be important. So the next thing we wanna do is we want to start modeling the posts that go between these posts. So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the tape measure tool right here, and this will work on the desktop version as well. Just select the tape measure tool. Make sure you've tapped the control key so the little plus is showing up so you can create a guide. And so we're gonna say that these posts are maybe six inches off the ground. So I'm just gonna type in a value of six right here. I'm also going to draw a guide that aligns with the central point right here. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow me to draw this in here, and I can now draw the profile of our boards that are gonna run between these posts. So in this case, um, we're gonna draw this so that it's 0.75 inches this way, and then three and a half inches tall, and then this way, it's going to be one and a half, like this. So basically the dimensions of a two by four. Now you might use a different size rail, but for what we're doing right here, we're gonna say that this is going to work just fine. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap the P key, mouse over this and single click, and then I'm gonna type in a value of eight feet and hit the enter key right here. Well then, what I wanna do is I also wanna make this a component. So I'm just gonna triple click on it. That's gonna allow me to select all the connected edges. And we're just gonna call this support rail right here. So this is now our support rail. And then we wanna draw another one. Let's just pick our height using the tape measure tool. So I'm gonna assume that this one is going to be 12 inches from the top like this. So that makes it really easy for us to use the move tool in copy mode. So we can tap the M key and mouse over this point right here. Notice how if I click, it's going to move this. But what I wanna do is I wanna tap the control key in order to go into copy mode. So when I create a copy, it's going to align with this point right here. So now we've got basically the supports that we need as a part of our fence. So now we wanna draw the pickets. And so the pickets are going to be pretty simple to draw. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw this aligned with this face right now. And then we'll come back in here and adjust it. And so let's go ahead and let's draw our picket. So the way that I'm gonna do that, so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna tap the L key in order to draw a line. And I'm just gonna pick a point like this corner point. And in this case, we're assuming these are gonna have a thickness maybe of like five eighths of an inch. So I'm just gonna type in a value of five eighths. And the face width of these is probably gonna be five and a half inches. So we're just gonna draw a line that's five and a half inches long. And basically what we're doing is we're giving ourselves the profile of a fence picket. And so then I can push pull this down and we could either push pull this down so that it's right on the ground right here, or we can type in maybe a value of four inches and hold it off a little bit. But then I'm gonna push pull this top rail right here, and I'm going to assume that this is going to be a shorter 
fence picket. So I'm gonna push pull it up to here, then I'm gonna push pull it down, maybe like four inches or something like that. So that's given me a fence picket that's going to go along here. And so again, remember, because this is something that's going to repeat, we wanna select the whole thing. We don't want this post, but then we wanna right click on it and we wanna make it a component. In this case, we're just gonna call this picket and hit OK. So now what we need to do is we need to set our spacing. And there's a few different ways that we can do that. So the first is if we wanted this to just be solid, we would use the move tool in copy mode and create an array. So in this case, we would tap the control key, use the move tool in copy mode. And then what we can do is we can type in times and the number of copies we wanna create. So if I type in a value of 10 and hit the enter key, it's gonna give me 10 copies. If I type in times, which is the star on your keyboard, by the way, I'm using my number pad and type in 15 or 20, it's gonna give me 20 copies like this. So that's how you could create a solid fence. But I don't really wanna create a solid fence. What I wanna do instead is I wanna create something with just a little bit of spacing in between it. So the way that I'm gonna do that is I'm actually going to use another tool contained inside of the move tools copy mode, the divide function. That's going to allow me to put equally spaced copies in here. So first thing I wanna do, so I'm gonna give myself a little space off of this end. So I'm just gonna type in a value. And we're just gonna say that we're gonna move this an inch and a half off of this face right here. Well then, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the tape measure tool to create a guide that's an inch and a half off of this face. Well now, this is where we're gonna use that divide function. So what we wanna do is we wanna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna pick a point. In this case, I'm gonna pick this one right here and I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. Remember, tap the M key, tap the control key, and then single click. That's gonna put me in copy mode. Well then, I can move this over like this to this point right here. Well, what that's gonna do is that's going to create one copy right here. Now, before I, before I do anything else, what I wanna do is I wanna type in the forward slash and a number of copies. So if I type in forward slash five in the enter key, that's gonna create five equally spaced copies from here to here. If I type in divided by 10, it's gonna create 10 equally spaced copies in here. So in this case, I like the way the 10 looks. So what we've done is we basically created one run of our fence. Now, let's make these pickets a little bit more interesting. We don't have to do anything too crazy, but remember that we created these as components. Well, because we created these as components, that means that we can come in here and we can adjust one, and the others are going to adjust with it. So again, let's use our tape measure tool to create a quick guide. And let's create a guide that's maybe an inch in right here. We'll do the same thing on this face. And then we'll create a guide that's an inch down like this. So now what we can do is we can draw a line right here and a line right here like this. And then we can push pull this back in order to remove that material. Remember that you can double click in order to repeat that last push pull distance um, when you're creating the second one. But then we're gonna erase out our guides. And now we've got our picket fence in here. So now what we need to do is we need to copy this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this whole thing, right click on it, and I'm gonna click on the option to make component right here. And in this case, we're gonna call this eight foot fence section and click on OK. So basically we've taken this whole thing and put it in one component. Well now I can use the array function just like we did before with the move tool in copy mode. So M key, single click, control. Now hold the shift key. And what you wanna do is you wanna align that with the end point right here. So what we've done is we've created a copy of this fence right here. Well now we can type in times and type in a value of something like four or times three in this case. And actually we're gonna do a times four. And what I wanna do is I wanna make this copy a little bit shorter, right? Like I want most of them to be the same length, but in this particular situation, um, this is going to be a shorter version of our fence, right? So we, what we wanna do is we wanna make this one unique. So to do that, 
I'm going to right click on this. Notice how there's an option in here to make unique. Well, as soon as I make something unique, what I've done is I've broken the connection to the other fences. So notice how right now, if I move this post around, it's affecting these fences over here, but it's not affecting these because I right clicked on it and I made it unique. That means that I can come in here and I can make some changes. Now, one thing to be aware of, remember that if we come in here and we try to make an adjustment to this board right here, that's the same as the components we have over here. So we want to make sure we make these unique as well. So in this case, the way that we're going to do that is we're going to take these two components, select them, then right click and click on the option to make unique. So now we've broken the link that was back to these components over here. So now if I make a change like moving this back to maybe like this point right here. So I'm actually going to move it here and then I'm going to move the face maybe an inch and a half further. Well, notice how now these two adjusted while the others in the other components did not. Well, now I can come in here and I can delete these. So now this has the proper length. And so we're going to keep doing this, reusing these and making them custom along the rest of the fence. So I'm going to use the move tool in copy mode to align this one to this corner. I'm going to rotate it. So in order to rotate it, we're going to tap the Q key and then tap the up arrow button to lock this to the blue axis. Well, that's going to allow us to move this over like this. And then I'm going to move this this way and then back here so that it's aligned like this. So then we're just going to do the same thing. Move tool in copy mode. And then again, we'll use the rotate tool to rotate this one and place it on the corner. And then one more time, move tool in copy mode. And we'll say time seven right here. All right, so one more thing, and I cannot hammer the idea of components enough when we're looking at this. Let's go ahead and let's make these corner posts a little bit more interesting because right now they're just kind of like square, right? And so there's a few different ways that we could do this. So one way that we can do this though, is I'm gonna double click into this component. Notice how when I select this component, all of the other copies are selected as well. Well, I'm gonna double click in here again, and I'm just going to make some quick adjustments. So in this case, all I wanna do is I just wanna take this top face and select it by clicking on it. Then I wanna tap the F key, and I wanna offset this out by maybe three quarters of an inch or an inch. We'll say an inch for right now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this top surface and I'm gonna push pull it up like this. I'm just gonna push pull it up one inch. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a rectangle back over this top piece. And then I'm gonna push pull this up another maybe inch and a half, so 1.5. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this top face, tap the S key to scale it, and then tap the control key to go to about center and I'm gonna scale this in. So effectively what we've done is we've created a cap for our fence. Well, the cool thing about this, we made this adjustment and this change was made to every other fence post in here because they're all copies of the same component. So say again, and this is a little more advanced, so you don't really need to do this, but um, you can kind of follow along. Say that I wanted to add a little bit of a recess in here like this, and we'll talk about this more in a future tutorial, but I can select this top surface. Oh, we need to make sure that we're inside of the component first. So I'm gonna draw this in here. So just something like this, but then I can select the top surface. I can use the follow me tool in order to actually remove material around the outside right here. So now what I've been able to do is I've been able to add detail to all of these really quickly um, while only making a change to one of them. All right, so I'll link to the next video in the series on this page as soon as it's ready to go. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or if you're stuck on anything or anything like that. You can also download the example file if you want it at the sketchupessentials.com slash 30 days. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.